particular condition of media, you're assuming those media are exactly the same, although they're not. There might be differences in temperature, there might be slight differences in pH. So how does that confound your analysis in terms of whether or not you can treat them as independent variables? Well, again, okay, the same thing, it'll, it'll, it'll confound in the same way. We're going to talk later on is a covariate signal, uh, that, that your measurements depend on some other uncontrolled variable. But if you're not going to do that analysis and you have done your best to match the conditions, you just chalk it off on being random. You know, it, it really matters that if you really want to take that into account, then you will be making those measurements of you just mentioned two potential confounders, temperature, pH. Then you start making those measurements and then incorporate them into the analysis as covariates. If you're not going to do it, then you just have to chalk it off. No, no. Unless you really have a reason to believe that that particular day was, was bad, you know, something. graduate students going to come and kill me, tell them, do 15 experiments to <laughs> make sure. So, so I think, does he, do you have a better feel, physical sort of intuitive feel for sanity deviations and error? Yeah. It basically, yeah, these are measures of variability. That's it. It's just variability of raw data, variability of input. That's it. Okay. Uh, so hypothesis testing, this is what we want to do, test differences. And particularly we're focusing on testing differences uh, of the means. That's the most common uh, thing that one does. Now, occasionally there is, there is, a, the, the, there is a, a, a problem where you know, not just the mean, but you want to test the whole distribution. Is that different? You know, uh, and, but that's not a common So uh, differences mean is the most common thing that we do, one does. And, and, and so parametric method is basically where there's normally distributed random selection independent. So then we can do this test such as ANOVA, t-test or whatever. You know. But all of these ANOVA, t-test, only one simple idea that covers everything. If you don't know anything else but this, we know that then you understand every test. A single single idea permeates, which is this, is the variance, so again, we are all in the same page, page, right, variance, variance, so statistically variance of a bunch of data, and this is, so if you have a bunch of data at x, i, i is 1 to n, so then you know the mean of this, Sum it up and divide by uh, degrees of freedom minus one. So that the, so parenthetically, this, this is called degrees of freedom. This thing you define. And I'll just tell you about little bit degrees of freedom. This is your uh, uh, variance, and which S is also standard deviation is and then standard error. Also represented as S because S stands for standard deviation. So this is see this this is standard deviation. What does it mean? This is of the raw data. So maybe we can call it X. X raw data. This is standard deviation of the mean. So you can see. So this is this n minus one. You know uh, degrees of freedom. You know so. The reason is minus one from it. It's 
uh, degrees of freedom, the, the most intuitive idea I can give you is that how much wiggle room is there, how many things you can change uh, uh, from which that, that number has been calculated and still that number will be the same number. That's the best way to think about it. So look, this, this, in order to calculate this number, you had to estimate this x bar from your data. And so therefore, your original data can be changed n minus 1 different ways, things. And still, the last one, you can adjust to give you the same answer. So it's because the x bar is the calculation. So think about it, one parameter was calculated, so the total number of data points minus 1. So here, uh, you can, you can so adjust the number of things uh, so that the S will not change, S squared will not change. So that's the degree of freedom concept. It's a little bit sort of uh, esoteric to discuss, but that's why n minus 1 comes not n, because one parameter had to be calculated from your data. And therefore, this thing. if there were two parameters calculated, to calculate this third parameter, this would be n minus 2. Anyway, so this is this is this is sort of a general structure. So 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 here, the here now we're comparing two groups. So the idea is between group variability, as defined by s square. Same thing, s square as the square root of each other. Variance is called s square. Uh, this is this is variance. This is standard deviation. This is variance. So. Between, so that's the main, main concept between, and then this is, maybe this is the last thing we'll discuss today. Uh, so this is the idea here. So uh, just to give you a feel for what is this, this between groups and within groups variability. That's the key concept. And then here is, this is what it shows. So if I had uh, data here, uh, so some kind of uh, see the effect of Controlled diet, eating spaghetti only, steak only, fruit and nuts on probably weight of people or something. Yeah. Uh, so here is the experiments we collected data in this group. I don't know how many there are seven samples in each group. Seven observations. Okay. I like mean, standard deviation, variability, and okay in each of them. I just gave you this. The question I'm asking is, are those four groups different? I just look visually looking like. So when you say no, just looking at it, you haven't done any calculation, right? What are you looking at? And that made you say no. The air, the bars. Yeah. <clears throat> and the dots. And the <laughs> dots. So the location of the dots. Mm -hmm. And then relative to each other. Right. And. And their overlap. Right. Right. Okay. Here, is it different? Uh, yes. Similar, you're looking at again the locations of the mean dots and sort of uh, variability, right? Here? Sample 2 is different. You could say sample 2 is different in the example before then, the other two are the same. Here, you think this may be different? Other three looks the same. It's like here, more different. Here, all different. Something like that, right? So you're looking, so you're visually, what you're processing is sort of uh, how the dots are variable with respect to each other. Mm -hmm. That's between group variability. Other thing, you were comparing that variability, visual so far, right? To this, when you said use the bar, you were looking at this bar. Yeah. Those are within group variables. See that? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you're doing. And that's that's the essence of all the tests. So here what this is what I gave here now. I added to the raw data, this particular thing is added. Here is the those dots are put now, this this average, this average, this average, this average are all together here. Shown clearly. And here is the variability of those dots. And here is the variability of the data. A little more clearly. Now you can see that that these guys, 
this variability, that both variabilities are about the same. So here now, here's the variability of the data, and here's the variability of the, the within. So here, the within uh, between group is large variability. And it's, it's sort of, if they came from the same population, we know that this variability and this variability, this should be always smaller than this, like square root of n smaller. Right? This is the variability of the mean. If they came from all the same, same population, then this, this is the estimate of the population standard deviation, which is same in all groups, and then this should be smaller. But here, actually, it's even larger than these guys. So obviously, something is different about these groups here. And that's the essence. So here, and then the same thing happens here. This variability is large. So the very, so, so the, 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 the F test basically is, is nothing more than the ratio of the population variance estimated from sample means. What I mean by that is that from sample, remember how the sample means are connected to the population variance? So sample mean, so sam, this is the standard error of the mean. So you can estimate the sample the population variance S by just multiplying by square root of n. That compared to the population variance estimated from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, individual sample variances in each group. So this is within, this is between. So the idea is this that if the samples from all those four groups came from the same population, basically there's no difference, then the top would be a small number compared to the bottom. Mm -hmm. But if they were intrinsically from different population, you see they will be large, the top will grow larger and larger because they're coming from different population. And therefore this number will grow. And that's the key. So it's, it's, it's so so here's a piece of data. So basically, uh, so you can see that, that uh, this is nothing. This is easy. Within is calculate the. This is the standard. This is what I wrote here, right here. In each group, calculate the variance, add it up, and then uh, divide by number of groups. So that gives you an average variance of your populations. And this is. See, this is, look at this, this is basically same kind of a equation, sum of squares 